Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I uh, had prepared somehow a different uh, planning, but uh, we had a lot of discussions before in the previous talk, and we had some discussions in the, in the coffee breaks. So I'll try to focus on some things which I think would be more interesting for you than just introductions to Stellar materials and stuff. So I'll try to improvise a little bit. Um, if, if it was wrong, I'm sorry for that, but I think it's, it's worth it. So um, as you know, Werner Heisenberg, you may have heard of it. Um, he said uh, some years ago that a quantum state with a perfectly defined momenta would have its position spread all over space, right? That's what we call uh, plane waves. And plane waves are very useful, since we, as we have seen before, because they allow us to get um, understandable yet simplified results. And this is also the case for neutrino oscillations. This is also the case what we, I'm going to talk about. And I'm not going to enter into details of neutrino oscillations because we know flavor organic states, mass organic states, they are not the same. Therefore, the neutrinos, when they evolve, they change from flavor, from tau to muon, and back and forth. And therefore, uh, no need to, to enter into this into detail. Um, what we want to enter, what I want to enter into detail is that, as you have noticed in the lecture from Joachim, when we derived the, the formula, one assumption that we, we made is that the flavor, the mass eigenstates states had a defined energy, a defined momentum. And therefore, they are completely local, or localized. They are plane waves, okay? This is, uh, as you may see, it's an approximation. And when, when we get this formula, this formula comes from, relies on our approximation that neutrinos are plane waves. But therefore the question is, what are we missing? What is wrong with this formula? This, it is incomplete. So let's try to think about what are we missing when we use the plane wave approximation? And it is quite simple. This is just a picture, take it with a grain of salt. But the idea is that when the mass eigenstates travel through space, the heavier ones will go faster and the slower ones will, go, will still advance, but they will, they will go still slower. So as you can see, uh, since plane waves spread all over space, the interference between these mass eigenstates will always be maximal, will, be, will happen all over the space. And this interference, which is neutrino oscillations, will have its maximum amplitude. But as we are saying, neutrinos uh, shouldn't be wave, uh, shouldn't be plane waves. But for example, um, one first solution would be to describe them as, as wave packets. And therefore, when we have wave packets, what happens is that they are localized. And since they travel at different velocities, they can separate. For example, the, the heavier ones will get slower and the lighter ones will get faster. When our detectors tries to catch this wave function, after it has separated, it may only catch part of it. So the question, the thing is that when we take this phenomena into account, for example, when we follow the quantum um, field theory formalism that Joaquin told us, there are new factors which appear. In particular, there's this factor here, which as you can see is an exponential damping term, okay? And, what, and the effect is quite simple. The amplitude just shrinks, okay? Um, so what I'm saying, and is something that most people know, is that the plane wave formula is actually incomplete, okay? It's wrong, but let's not be dramatic because the thing is that with standard model or natural neutrinos, um, this effect is not important because the, the mass differences is, are very slow and they, and they don't get separate at least in most oscillation experiments. However, our, our point that we, that we did, that we tried to, that we'll try to, to, put in, to put here into words is that this effect might be important if we're considering as um, Jacqueline said before, uh, one electron volt, for example, is stellar neutrinos. And one electron volt stellar neutrinos are very interesting because there are a lot, some anomalies in experiments like LSMD and microboon, which propose this hypothesis to solve the, the, the solution. In order, so I, what I want to say is that if there's a one electron volt stellar neutrino, which is heavier, it will get slower and therefore it may separate from the rest. So what I want to say, well, I want to convey here is how wrong is it to model a stellar neutrino one electron volt as a plane wave. So in order to solve the, in order to answer this question, we must, we must um, draw this oscillation length and this coherent length, which we we're discussing before, which is at the length at which they separate and which this effect becomes relevant. So let's do this. And we have this beautiful plot with uh, different experiments, a lot of them. Um, there's a lot of money in neutrinos, that's good. And there's the electricity of the neutrino, the, uh, the energy of the neutrinos and the baseline of the experiment. And here in green, we have the oscillation length, where, where experiments are sensitive to the oscillations. And here in yellow, we have the coherent length, 
with a value of the wave packet width, which I will discuss now, okay? But um, with this value here, what we see, the important region is the one in the intersection where the experiments are both sensitive to the oscillation, but this oscillation is dampened here. So it is these experiments, in particular, the ones from nuclear reactors and the ones from gallium anomaly experiments, which are called, which are in principle affected by this and must be careful with their oscillation problem. So if, this, if they are not careful, they might get to premature results. One of such results is uh, this Terra neutrino uh, parameter space. And for example, I use this, it's very useful. Um, this thing here, okay, is the preferred region by gallium anomaly experiments, best state and galaxies, for example. And um, as you can see, this preferred region by these experiments is excluded by this contour here from nuclear reactor experiments, for example, as Daya Bay and other ones. This is a known discrepancy. What we want to say is that um, at least for the values um, allowed by experimental bounds, we, can, we are going to discuss that later, this result is premature. And if you put into account the coherence effect, the controls get a little bit softened. And there's, uh, okay, it's not the, 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 it's not the perfect <laughs> solving of, of tension, but the tension gets a little bit relieved, okay? Um, so what we try to say, and what we, I'm saying here is that at least you must be careful. There are some scenarios where this can be important. However, um, and I have to be honest with you, there's, another, uh, there's a big elephant in the room, <laughs> a very big elephant in the room, um, which is what is the width of the wave packet that I'm using? Because this effect of separation, okay, it's more important if the, if the, the packets are narrow. If they are very wide, they will be very difficult for them to separate. So it is very important and as good physicists, we must ask ourselves, what is the wave packet width? What is the correct one? What is the, um, how much are we wrong? So which ones could they be? For example, in the case of nuclear reactors, we expect neutrinos to be emitted from nucleons and from nuclei, for example, and we could be around the 10 nanometers of one per, um, Armstrong, I don't know, one per me. I think maybe it's wrong. Well, um, could, it, could be the size of a nucleon, um, could be, for example, the mean free path of nuclear particles, could be the size of a nucleon. Um, there are different estimations. Um, most of them are around here, okay? But we have tried to be as pragmatic as possible and we have not entered into any discussion. There's a lot of discussion, a lot of bibliography. What we have stood is to experimental observations. And up to today, the only experimental observations on the wave packet width come from um, oscillation experiments, namely Daya Bay and some past experiments. So, um, in theory, we expect this wave packet width to be around here. And therefore, all of the effect that I have sold you um, would be dead, and there would be no, 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 no effect. But um, for example, there could be some beyond the standard model scenario around the corner, and we don't know about it or our estimations could go wrong. So what we want to say is that we must be careful with it. For the experimental observations that we have, this result may be possible. And just to finish, uh, just to put some future uh, hope, um, and Beat Fritze made a very good talk on the Juno experiment, which also the Juno experiment is going to, to say something about this, because you can see that Juno is just in the intersection of the same effect, but with, with atmospheric neutrinos. So Juno might put a lower bound, might put a bigger bound, a better bound on this wave packet width, and it might tell us, or probably our, our effect is that, or maybe there's some strange signal with, um, well, with some thing, something exciting to discover. Anyway, um, there's uh, soon something to be, got, to be said about it. And I think that brings me to my last slide. I would just like to thank the organizers, uh, to take this chance to thank the organizers, because not only they invited me because of putting us together, it has been a beautiful time and it will be a beautiful time. And I would like to finish the, the talk with a personal note. I will find it beautiful and discussing that with you was also beautiful, that this elusive nature of neutrinos is really helping us to probe such a fundamental, a fundamental property of quantum mechanics, the standard quantum mechanics. And I think that's beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andres. Very nice. Are there are uh, questions. Yeah. So, what determines the wave packet width? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, <laughs> in principle, for example, um, you could have different effects. Uh, in fact, 
there is not only the width of the wave packet, but for example, the detection also plays a role. But in the case of production, for example, um, you could have many different effects. Uh, for example, if the if the neutrino is produced in the size of a nuclear of a nucleus, for example, there would be the, the uncertainty or where in the nucleus it is produced, for example, and there will, you have uh, an uncertainty in the size of the nucleus. But for example, uh, there could be some collective phenomena from the medium mm -hmm. that would let you lose even more coherence and it would make make the uncertainty even larger. Okay. Yeah. Did that answer the question? I, I think so. Yeah. I was mainly wondering like if if you can have different wave packet widths depending on the process of production, like yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, in fact, in what I'm talking about is principally nuclear reactors. But for example, in the case of P on decay, yeah. I think it is quite better understood that in that in, there's some theoretical estimations which are quite nice. Yeah, I think I have it. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know the value exactly, um, okay. yeah. probably not in the top of my head, but as you can see, it is small, it is this one here, oh, no, this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this okay, okay. much better, and as you can see, um, the effect is uh, even less, so it's a larger cross-section than in the case of nuclear. And in the case of supernovae? And in the case of supernovae, I honestly don't know. Okay. Uh, I prefer uh, to. I don't know either. <laughs> it could be 10 kilometers or could be 10 kilometers uh, for. Uh, so it's a controversial issue, but there was a paper by Wolfie recently. Uh, sorry. Yeah, there was a paper by Wolfie recently, and they claim uh, that it would be as small as 10 power minus 11 centimeters. Yeah. It's tiny. It's tiny, yeah. It's not the size of the object. No, no. Basically, because you have a, a, a nuclear process emitting the neutrinos, right? Yeah. So, uh, in a neutrino sphere, right? In a neutrino sphere, right. Okay, and uh, any further comments, questions? Yeah. Um, does it like change over time, the, the, the wave? packet width or, or does it degrade and then gets bigger or smaller? Uh, in principle, I can think of phenomena which it could make it bigger or smaller. Um, but still, um, I would take this as a grain of salt. I mean, even the wave packet uh, formalism is incomplete. And I mean, it's not incomplete, but it has some approximations which are not really elegant. For example, like Joachim said. So I wouldn't tell for sure. Uh, thing, you know what I mean? Like a Try to extract the, 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 yes, the, exactly. You um, know what I mean? In principle, uh, that's exactly what, what the value that you have used this one observation of, of experiments. It comes from Daya Bay uh, and other solution experiments, which precisely take a look if, if there was this, this, uh, this damping. Um, and since they have not seen it, what would be the value? Like, okay, uh, it's a uh, 10, uh, two, two, 10 to the minus four nanometers. Okay, okay, I'll take a look to the paper. Okay, okay. okay let's uh, thank Andres again. <laughs>